The date is January 6, 2011. On that day, Happy Lee published a tool-assisted speedrun of the original Super Mario Bros. for the NES. A tool-assisted speedrun, or TAS for short, is when a script of inputs, written frame by frame, is played back on an emulator in order to figure out the theoretical fastest time a game can be beaten in. Happy Lee's Super Mario Bros. TAS is yet to be improved since, as no time saves have been found in the game for over 10 years. The gameplay of the TAS is incredibly precise, and used techniques seemingly unrealistic or straight up impossible for a human to realistically pull off, and while no human could ever hope to match Happy Lee's TAS, it created a long-term challenge for speedrunners. Could a human beat Super Mario Bros. in 4 minutes 54 seconds? For several years, the answer was obviously no, but over the past decade, as new strategies were implemented in speedruns, as new second barriers were being broken, 454 turned from a certain impossibility to an inevitable event. Sure enough, on April 7th, 2021, Super Mario Bros. was beaten in 454.948. The final second barrier has finally been broken, and it is one of the most monumental events in speedrunning history. Today, by popular demand, I will go over the previous any% milestones in Super Mario Bros., the techniques developed over the past decade, as well as the new strats that made 454 possible, as well as what the perfect run a human could achieve would look like in the future. But before we begin, only 8% of my audience is actually subscribed, so if you end up liking this video, don't forget to sub on your way out. You can always unsub at any time. Thank you. Now, before we talk about the new developments that made 454 possible, allow me to give y'all a crash course on the previous second bears in Super Mario Bros. Any% percent and the tricks used to break them, as I'm aware that not everyone watching this is familiar with the speedrun. To start, let's talk about glitches and twin galaxies, two things that mixed as well as oil and water. Back in the early 2000s, many classic NES speedrun world records were legitimized by the organization Twin Galaxies. However, they banned the use of glitches for video game world records, and as a result, Useful tricks that were known at the time, such as the wrong warps in 4-2 and 8-4, and the wall jump in the latter stage, were not allowed. By 2007, speedrunner Andrew G was frustrated with how Twin Galaxy's stance on glitches stunted the potential of the speedrun, and so he abandoned Twin Galaxies in favor of Speed Demo's Archive, which allowed glitches. On Speed Demo's Archive, he would achieve and upload the first world record using these previously mentioned glitches with a time of 5 minutes and 600 milliseconds. Three years later, on Christmas Eve of 2010, Andrew G broke the 5 minute barrier for the first time. While this run more or less used the same strategies from 2007 with better execution, you could argue with this milestone that Super Mario Bros. speedrunning had truly began. Nearly a year later, on December 5th, 2011, Andrew G achieved the first 456, with the most notable time saves being a much cleaner 8-4 and jumping higher on the flagpole in 8-3, which is a few frames faster than the previous runs in which he grabbed the 8-3 flagpole from the bottom. This allowed 21 frames, or approximately 0.35 seconds, to be shaved off, thanks to the game's frame rule system. For those unaware, in Super Mario Bros, the game checks every 21 frames to see if the player has completed a level, a period of time known as a frame rule. This means that if you arrive at the end of level early within the frame rule, you could start the next level at the exact same time as someone who beat the level slower, but was fast enough to be within the same frame rule. If you're just a bit too late, however, you miss the faster frame rule and you start the next stage about 0.35 seconds slower. This means that in the speedrun, Time can only be gained or lost in intervals of about 350 milliseconds, with the exception of 8-4, where the timer is stopped upon touching the axe. It's also worth bringing up that the frame rules also influence certain enemy patterns. This means that if you were to wait to start the game after resetting for the same amount of time and manage to reach certain levels consistently within the same frame rule, you would see the same patterns for obstacles such as fire bars and bullet bill cannons. The latter manipulation is especially important for what led to the first 457 by Saradoc on June 5th, 2014. After waiting on the title screen for a bit and reaching the end of 8-2 on the correct frame rule, the bullet bill cannon at the end fired instantly, which allowed Saradoc to take full advantage of the bullet bill glitch. 
By precisely jumping off a bullet bill near the bottom of the flagpole, it is possible to clip into the block and skip not only the lowering of the flag, but also walking to the building at the end, which causes the in-game time limit to start rolling down instantly. Because Saradoc manipulated the bullet bill to fire instantly, he saved two frame rules, leading to a final time of 457.693. A couple years later, on October 5th, 2016, Darbian would achieve the first 456, in large part due to the use of a previously task-only trick known as the flagpole glitch. Thanks to talented glitch hunter Sockfolder, who had previously found a consistent setup for Super Mario 64's infamous cannonless trick, consistent setups were found so players could perform a sequence of precise inputs in order to clip into the base of the flagpole, which is dependent on having Mario having the correct position down to the subpixel which is 1 16th of a pixel in this game. Sock folder setups allowed for a frame rule to be saved in both 1-1 and 4-1, saving two frame rules over not performing any flagpole glitches. Another two years would pass before Cosmic would achieve the first 455, and during that time, three frame rules were saved. On October 20th, 2017, Darbian would become the first to implement the flagpole glitch at the end of 8-3, Runners began to save another frame rule in 4-2 thanks to a faster wrong warp setup developed by Blazid. In the past, runners attempted to shave off a frame rule by attempting fast 4-2, where instead of bumping into blocks three times in order to displace Mario's horizontal position to the right to make the wrong warp work, runners tried to use two bumps in order to reach the end faster, but it was very inconsistent and was abandoned when the flagpole glitch became the meta. Thanks to Blazid, all you needed to do now was perform a wall clip into the bricks here, which allowed for a far more consistent and easier fast 4-2. Finally, on September 24th, 2018, the same run in which Cosmic achieved the first 455, he implemented the hardest trick in the game up until that point, the 1-2 pipe clip. In order to perform this, the runner has to make specific movements as they run through the underground in order to get the correct sub-pixel position for the wall clip and perform a frame-perfect jump at the end to clip through the pipe. Doing this allows Mario to reach the warp zone to World 4 faster, and saves yet another frame rule if done correctly. At the start of 2019, Cosmic and Sumwest were the only two runners with a 455, and the well of frame rule saves appeared to have dried up. At this point, the only realistic time saves came from optimizing 8-4, where runners such as Sumwest began to implement a difficult trick known as Fast Acceleration. At the start of a level or a sub-area, such as when Mario exits a pipe, a left input can be buffered while holding B or another direction on the D-pad. A frame later, left is released before right and A are pressed another frame later, allowing Mario to start running ahead faster, since Mario moves in the air faster backwards compared to forwards. Fast accelerations don't have to be performed frame perfectly to save time, but obviously performing it perfectly saves closer to 4 to 6 frames as opposed to only 1 or 2 frames. Still, many people were doubtful at the prospects of a 454 happening, as even with faster 8-4s, it would require at least 2 frame rule saves out of the 3 remaining performed by the tasks to be performed in a real-time run. The 3 remaining frame rules at the time included the following. Lightning 4-2, a ludicrously difficult frame rule save involving a series of frame-perfect inputs with no practical human setup quite yet. PL8-1, a faster 8-1 frame rule named after top runner stuck in a plate, was possible, but very difficult. By performing an optimal fast acceleration at the start of the level, in addition to the flagpole glitch at the end, which was not performed in previous runs due to the flagpole glitch not saving enough time to save the frame rule without the fast excel, made the subpixel setup pretty hard. By 2019, only a handful of runners had pulled it off in practice. Finally, there was TAS 8-2, which appeared to be humanly impossible, until later in the summer. On September 3rd, 2019, the world record holder at the time, Tavin Webb 2002 became the first person to save the frame rule in practice. But how? How did Tavin do it? They said it couldn't be done! Well, it turned out to be possible, but it just had zero room for error. To start off, Tavin performed a fast excel and then ran through the level until this pipe. Normally in runs, this piranha plant forces the runner to slow down a bit so that they don't get hit and die. Instead, 
Tavin performs a precise wall jump off the side of the pipe, allowing for the plant to be cleared without sacrificing any speed. From here, the bullet bill fires from the cannon and the bullet bill glitch is performed on the first frame possible. With this development, 454 no longer seemed impossible, but the 8-2 frame rule save needed a better setup if it were to be used in world record attempts. Sure enough, by July of 2020, Kriller37 would create a viable TAS 8-2 setup that used a frame rule manipulation on the title screen, which not only caused the bullet bill to fire instantly after the tricky plant jump, but it also didn't require a fast acceleration anymore. In addition, some improvements were made for the PL8-1 setup, making 454 likelier by the day. By the fall of 2020, the previous world record holders for the 455 times, such as Tavin, Sumwest, and Cosmic, had moved on to other speed games or life projects, leaving the reins of any percent to a new generation of runners. Sure enough, within the coming months, three new world record holders would emerge as the hottest 454 contenders. On October 23rd, the first of these three runners would make history when the blindingly fast Brazilian, Lakuki, would tie Cosmic's world record of 455.646, which was set early in the year, notably matching the fastest 8-4 to ever be performed in a full game run. Lakuki, however, had not saved any new frame rules. That honor goes to the keyboard warrior himself, Niftsky, who would lower the record to a 455.430 exactly three weeks later, becoming the first person to implement the TAS 8-2 frame rule save in a world record run. He had managed to clutch the run on his first attempt past TAS 8-2, but lost eight frames in 8-4 compared to Cosmic and Makuki. If he wanted to break 454, he would need to improve at 8-4 and implement PL 8-1. Moving on, Nitsky's game changer of a record would last to the end of the year, until on January 2nd, when the brilliant Brit, Miniland333, got his first world record in the category with a 455.314, nailing TAS 8-2 and played through 8-4 just one frame slower than Lakuki. A month later, Miniland would also improve this time down to a 455.230 utilizing two fast accelerations and having a perfect water section to complete the level four frames faster than Lakuki, the fastest 8-4 ever seen in a full game run. With this run, 454 was on the horizon, with intense competition that left viewers at home glued to these players' streams. It could happen any day now. All that was left is for the runners to implement the final puzzle piece, PL8-1. The question was no longer if anyone could get a 454, but who and when. It was now March 2021, and things had reached a boiling point. Throughout the month, many runners were on the verge of 454. Lukuki, Nifsky, and Miniland had proven themselves without a doubt that they can get it, whether it be by finishing would-be 454 runs by starting from 4-2, or by getting runs past successful 8-1 frame rule saves, only to lose the run afterwards. If it wasn't clear enough, 454 is incredibly hard, as you'd need to nail every flagpole glitch, the pipe flip, fast accelerations, wall jumps, sub-pixel manipulations, and an excellent 8-4 on top of all of that. To spice things up, at the tail end of February, a different runner, the Lixino, would knock Nifsky out of second place with a 455.413, yet another 454 contender to add to the mix. March turned into April, and these four runners had their eyes on the prize. Hundreds upon hundreds of failed attempts would pass, until April 7th, when the run would begin. I stayed calm and it worked! Holy cow! Holy cow, holy cow, holy cow! Niftsky had done it. He had beaten Super Mario Bros. in 4 minutes, 54 seconds, and 948 milliseconds. 
becoming the first person to break the final second barrier in the game. As the chat began losing their minds, and as members of the community joined in on a Discord call to congratulate Nifsky, an era of Super Mario Bros. speedrunning had just ended. For well over a decade and a half, it had been established that the game could not be beaten in less than 4 minutes 54 seconds, which had been reaffirmed with Happy Lee's task having stood as the fastest theoretical time since the start of 2011. Back then, no one expected humans to be within a second of the absolute limit, but after over a decade of new strategies, new innovations, and a new generation of players, here we are. So what happens from here? Is any percent finally dead? The answer is no, absolutely not. As revolutionary and as iconic as Nifsky's first 454 is, it is very beatable. His 8-4 was on par with Cosmic and Lukuki, but it was 4 frames slower than Miniland, meaning that 454.8 is very likely. Miniland, Lukuki, and the Lexino can definitely snipe the record at any time, as well as any active runner with a 455, if they put the time in. As for the remaining time saves, Lightning 4-2 is the last frame rule yet to be saved in an actual run. So far, Nifsky is the only person to have successfully pulled off Lightning 4-2 in practice, using an inconsistent setup where Mario is displaced 11 pixels to the right when bumping into this platform, and then performing a backwards wall jump off the side of this pipe to execute the fastest possible wrong warp, after which, a successful fast acceleration and tight movement must be performed in the warp zone area in order to just barely save the frame rule. Recently, Kriller came up with a new setup that is supposedly easier, but no one has performed it quite yet. If Kriller or anyone else could solve Lightning 4-2, it will definitely begin to be used in runs. As for 8-4, there is so much potential for time saves that I'm not even sure when or if it'll ever be executed perfectly in a run. Currently, the fastest 8-4 in a full run uses two fast accelerations, but the fastest 8-4 possible within RTA rules involves using five fast accelerations. On April 22nd, Lukuki set an untied individual level record for 8-4 using five fast excels, although it wasn't quite perfect. Taking into account Lukuki's 8-4 world record and Lightning 4-2, the best possible time for a Super Mario Bros. speedrun is 454.298. If you take into account Lukuki's fastest individual segments of 8-4 spliced together, another frame can be shaved off in the final room, lowering the best theoretical time to 454.282. This is a quarter of a second slower than Happy Lee's task, which uses left and right simultaneous inputs which are banned in actual speedruns. When compared to Maru's no left and right task published two years ago, it is only one frame slower, but according to Lukuki, that last frame remaining in the first room is considered impossible for a human to save on original hardware, meaning we could safely say that the theoretical best time for a human is 454.282. Until people reach that time, Super Mario Bros. Any% percent is far from finished. A new era of Super Mario Bros. speedrunning is upon us, and I'm excited to see how much further this game goes. Huge congrats to Nifsky for getting the first 454, and good luck to anyone else grinding for 454 and or the world record. Go check out their YouTube channels and Twitch streams, as well as tutorials for learning the speedrun if this video interested you. I'm thinking about speedrunning the game myself this summer, so keep your eyes peeled if I ever give it a go. Thank you all so much for watching, and remember to shoot for the moon.